You probably have seen my before and after animated GIFs in my YouTube channel's community tab. I've been getting a lot of questions asking if they were created in Photoshop and if they were to create a tutorial on it. The answer is yes, they were created in Photoshop and this is a tutorial where I'm going to show you how they were made. If you want to follow along with me, then look at the description below. There's a link to my website where you can download the images that I'll be using for this tutorial. All right, let's jump right into it. This is the composite that we're going to use as an example, and it's a very simple composite. It has just three layers, a background layer, a foreground layer, and a color lookup adjustment to apply a color grade. And the foreground layer is simply a green screen image. You can disable a layer mask by holding shift and clicking on the layer mask thumbnail. And you can see that we have this runner jumping over the hurdles and she is behind a green screen. By the way, if you want to learn how to remove the green screen from a photo in Photoshop, then check out the link in the description. I made a tutorial recently where I talked all about that. So if you're curious on how to do that, make sure that you check out this video. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is create the document that will house our animations. So to do that, I'm gonna go into File and select New. From here, you can create your document and I will make a document that is 1080 by 1080 with a resolution of 72 pixels. The reason that I'm using a 1080 by 1080 document is that that's the one-to-one -one ratio that YouTube likes for the community tab. And also that's the one-to-one -one ratio that Instagram uses for the square images on their posts and videos. So after you input the width, height, and resolution, you need to go and make sure that you're working in the RGB color mode and under advanced, make sure that you select the sRGB color profile, then you can press create. This will create a new document. And what we need to do now is place our before and after photos in this document. So I'm going to go back to my composite here and I'll create the after photo first. I'll press Control A on Windows, Command A on the Mac to make a selection around the entire canvas. You can see the selection going around it, the marching ants, you can see them here. And what I'll do now is go into Edit, Copy Merge to copy all the visible layers. Then I'll go into my animation document and I'll paste. Control V on Windows, Command V on the Mac, and I can just call this layer after. Then I'll right click and convert it into a smart object. A smart object is a container that allows you to hold one or more layers and you can apply non-destructive adjustments, distortions, filters, and transformations. In other words, you can always come back and change it. And the reason that we're converting it into a smart object is so that we can have a container that holds our layer and we can replace the contents with other layers. This will allow us to create a template so that we can just drag and drop file into it and the animation will be created automatically. But anyway, here's our smart object layer. Another thing that I'll do is right click on the layer and label it. I'm gonna apply a blue label to it just so that it's easy to see in the layers panel and it sticks out if I need to find my after layer. I'm gonna go back into my composite to create the before photo. I'll disable the color lookup adjustment layer and I'll disable the layer mask by holding shift and clicking on the layer mask thumbnail. Then with my selection still active, you can see the selection going around the canvas still. I'm going to go into edit, copy merge, go back into my animation document and press control V on windows, command V on the Mac to paste. I can call this layer before and I'll right click and convert it into a smart object. Then I'll right click and apply the red label. What I'll do now is select both layers by holding shift and clicking on both. With both layers selected, I'll press Control T on Windows, Command T on the Mac to transform, and I can scale these layers down and place them within my document. Obviously, I'm going to lose a little bit of the image, but that's okay. And I just need to make sure that she is in frame, and I can click on the check mark to commit the changes. And before we continue, just make sure that the before and after images align, and it looks like they are aligning in this case. And now we're going to create the animation. And to do so, we're going to use a layer mask. So I'm going to create a layer mask by clicking on the layer mask icon. And I'm going to fill this entire layer with black by filling with my foreground color. You can see that my foreground color is black. So I can press Alt and Backspace on Windows. That's Option Delete on the Mac. 
and make sure that you do it on the layer mask. The focus is on the layer mask. If you do it on the actual layer here, it will not work. So make sure that you do it on the layer mask. Then click on this icon here to unlink the layer mask from the layer. And with the layer mask active, I can enable the move tool from the toolbar and drag the layer mask. And look at that. Look at the effect that it creates. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to animate the layer mask to create the effect. And to do so, I'm going to use the timeline panel. You can go into window and select timeline. And then from this drop down, select create video timeline and click on this button. And you'll have your two layers here. Click on the arrow for the before video layer and enable the layer mask position stopwatch here. This is going to create a keyframe, this little yellow icon here. And this is telling Photoshop that this is the position where the layer mask is at this moment in time. And I'm going to drag the playhead to about 15 frames in, so about half a second. And I'm going to drag this frame here. And then I'll drag the playhead over to about a second and a half. And I'll click and drag the layer mask to the other end, right about here, just to the edge. And actually, I noticed that I made a mistake. I wanted to start with the green, not the after. So what I'll do is swap the keyframes. So notice now that we start with green, the before, and that's what I want. I want to start with green and right about half a second, I want to start transitioning into the after. And that should be about a second. And I can drag this one here. I can click and drag the playhead to the beginning and either hit the space bar or press the play button to play the animation. And that looks pretty good. What I'm going to do now is drag the playhead to about three seconds. And this is where I'm going to end the animation. So I'm going to drag these video layers to the three second mark because I only want a three second animation. Then I'm going to come back with the layer mask to reveal the original green background. To do so, I'm going to go to about two seconds and a half and I'll select the layer mask and then move it back over to the edge here right about there. Notice that Photoshop automatically creates a keyframe in the layer mask position because earlier we enabled the stopwatch. And I can hit play to see the animation. The one thing I'm not liking is that it comes back right away. So we need to make sure that the layer mask holds for a second. To do so, I'll select this keyframe, right click, select copy, move the playhead a little bit, right click on the same keyframe again and select paste. So then we're going to hold that transition for just a second. And then maybe I can move this over to the right, right about here and maybe move this one here. So let's watch it again. I'll hit the play button. And that's much better, but it holds a little bit too long here. So what I'll do is I'll select these two keyframes and drag them over to the left and hit play again and see what that looks like. I think I'm liking that a bit more. Maybe if I were to drag this one to the left, I think we'll get the result that we're looking for. So there we go. I think that's much, much better. And by the way, if you want the transition to be faster, just keep these keyframes closer to each other and that will speed up the transition. So totally up to you. In this case, I like it that they're not both the same speed. In fact, the first one may be a little fast, so I can just select these three keyframes by holding shift and clicking on all of them and then dragging this over to the right. And I'll press play one more time. And this is looking fantastic. What we're going to do now is export this animation as a video first, and then I'll show you how to export it as an animated GIF. To export this animation as a video, click on the flyout menu in the timeline panel and select render video. From here, simply select H.264 as your format and you can render the animation. To render it as an animated GIF, all you need to do is go into file, export, save for the web legacy. From this window, you'll see a preview here in the center and you can actually play it if you have GIF selected. So make sure that you select GIF from the drop down, then under looping options, make sure that you select forever. One thing that you should note, if the colors are not looking okay, this is what you should do. You should adjust the color reduction algorithm. In a lot of cases, adaptive may look better. 
In this case, it doesn't look like there's much of a difference. So either adaptive or selective will work. Just use the algorithm that better works for your animated GIF. Then you can click on the play button to see a preview of your animated GIF. Don't worry about it if it looks choppy like it's looking here. You can actually click on this button to get a better preview in your browser. So let me click on that. And Photoshop will open up your browser and show you a preview of the animation. Look how much smoother this animation is. Also, since this is a 1080 by 1080 document, pay close attention to the file size. If the file size is too large for your needs, you can always reduce the image size by entering a new width and height on these boxes or by reducing the percentage value. Usually I'll reduce it to 75 or 50% depending on the image size needs that I have. In this case, I'll just leave it where it is and I'll click on the save button to export my animated GIF. And that's how you would create a before and after animation in Photoshop. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought about this technique. If you found anything useful at all, make sure that you click on that like button now. And if this is your first time at the Photoshop training channel, click on that subscribe and notification buttons. My name is Jesus Ramirez. And remember, if you want to learn more about removing green screens in Photoshop, then check out this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you again in the next video.